This is an absolutely crazy week. And I want to tell you why. We had OpenAI on Friday, starting out like the, the week-long push by talking about Codex. And then we have four other major events this week, all to do with AI. And I'm going to explain why and kind of what to think about and what to ask yourself. Number one, first event this week, Microsoft Build happening already. The big headliner was that they announced support for Model Context Protocol, but they have some other pieces too. They have uh, multi-agent orchestration. They have GitHub autonomous coding agents. There's some other stuff in there. But we're not done. Because Microsoft Build then gives way to Google I.O. on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, and that's going to have Gemini absolutely everywhere, probably a heavy lean on Agentic as well. There's going to be an XR headset with Android. They're going to be looking to have this idea of like, I think, ambient AI, AI everywhere, AI as a system service, right? But we're still not done yet because then Thursday, Anthropic has its first developer conference, Code with Claude, which is a live stream keynote. And we will see what happens. I think we're going to have a roadmap for the next Claude model. I suspect we're going to get into model context protocol security. There will probably be a Claude code command line interface thing that is intended to rival GitHub Copilot or lean farther in versus Codex, which OpenAI started the week on. It's just thing after thing after thing, right? It's breathless. And I wanted to ask myself, why? Why do we have OpenAI, Microsoft, Google, Anthropic, bam, 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 all in a row on one week? Why are they fighting like this? There's a few answers. Number one, and this is hilarious, but it's true. This is a great weather week in San Francisco. And early June, which is also great weather, is already taken by Apple's WWDC. And so historically, Google I.O., was positioned on this week in May in order to have their own hotel bookings, have their own conference space, not compete with WWDC, but still get that nice fair weather uh, window in San Francisco. Now, of course, it's all about AI. The Apple thing isn't as important, but Google ends up anchoring this AI week because they're going on IO anyway every year on this week. And other major model makers, now that Google's in the AI space, want to step on Google's narrative and jump all over it with their own. But there's also a deeper reason. At the end of the day, this period of time gives you space to shape earnings expectations before earnings go, if you're a major company like Google. It can give you space to talk about your build plans in ways that feed into NVIDIA's earnings. And critically, beyond just the earning story, it can get you into place in enterprise buying committees for next year's buying cycle. And so if you're launching a B2B product or you're launching something that you expect to sell through an enterprise deal cycle, May is a great spot to be to get into conversation over the summer for the 2026 budgeting year. And I know 2026 seems really early. We just hit spring of 2025, but this is how enterprise deal cycles actually work. And so if you're looking at this particular IO and you're wondering, what should I ask? Like, what are the questions I should be keeping in mind? My suggestion to you is that these five questions are going to be highly informative. If you ask these over the course of the week, across all the vendors, not just one, I think it will help you to think about the week like a strategist rather than thinking about it like, you know, a rabbit chasing a hare in a race, right? A news chaser. So question number one, where did a vendor turn op optional usage into effectively the new default? So as an example, when Microsoft baked model context protocol into Windows, that's not just a feature announcement. They're changing what happens automatically. They're rewriting user behavior. So pay attention to those moments. Number two, what proprietary feedback loop was unlocked with a particular launch? And so it's not about a slick demo. It's about whether there's a way to tie that new agent, that new SDK, whatever it is, to the most valuable data that a creator can get into their training pipeline. And so look for ways these 
model makers are trying to build feedback loops that give them a compounding advantage. Number three, which bottleneck is a keynote attacking? And is that an, a, a coherent attack? Are they attacking distribution? Are they attacking GPU scarcity, which is a big one for Claude? Are they attacking context fragmentation? There's a few others. And then look at whether they're actually able to attack that bottleneck strategically and coherently and look at whether that is the right bottleneck for that company. And I'm going to be thinking about these too. So like, I will probably also be coming back throughout the week and talking about this. Number four, just from a building perspective, are there new ways that developers can get in and very quickly build on a particular announcement? You may not be a developer, but is this something that is easy for two people in a coffee shop in San Francisco to build into something useful? And that matters because if you're able to seed an ecosystem like that, you are more likely to become the default go-to. And that's one of the long-term plays model makers look at. And then number five, is there a price or capacity threshold that quietly got flipped? So is there a token price that fell below current cost to serve? Is there a public guarantee of, uh, say, Blackwell GPU capacity? Um, or is it no hard numbers, no defined context size, no reserve compute, all hand wavy? You want to look for the places where they're actually announcing specific pricing changes or capacity thresholds that are going to change the strategic picture because they reset the unit economics of the space. Google loves to do this. I would not be surprised to see Google lean in here, but they're not the only ones that play at this. So net net, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at how you can build new defaults. I'm looking at feedback loops. I'm looking at bottlenecks. I'm looking at how you can think about building easily and I'm looking at price and capacity thresholds and how those change. I think that's a pretty strategic lens. I'm going to withhold a lot of judgment on how the week goes until we see how everybody shows up, right? It's kind of like uh, the uh, NFL or NBA drafts. You have to see who gets picked until the end, and then you make an assessment on the quality of the draft class. In the same way, you kind of got to wait until the end of the week, and then you can make an assessment on, so to speak, who won this week. But this is why this is such a big week. This is why this is super week for AI. I hope you enjoyed the context and uh, have a good AI super week.